So here we go into techniques of touch. And this is touch that is most ideal for either the first stage or the second stage of labor. And this requires a birth partner that you trust. So that birth partner could be your life partner, could be your mom, your best friend, an experienced doula or midwife that you've hired during the course of your pregnancy that by the time you give birth, you deeply trust. You only want someone to have their hands on your body at any time, but especially in labor, uh, who you trust deeply. So this kind of touch um, is meant to convey relaxation. So we're going to talk about three different kinds of touch. And regardless of which kind, you need to be relaxed as the person who's giving the touch, right? So just to think about that, that if you're stressed and your jaw is tight and you're, you're um, experiencing tension in your body, you're going to convey that through your touch. So the reason I'm holding a feather is that I like thinking about this first kind of touch as the feather touch massage. And so as I prepare to give this type of massage to a, a mama who's in labor, I want to make sure that I'm relaxed. Um, and the reason I like thinking of it as a feather is that a feather is both very gentle, but it also has a spine. So it has a bit of a, of a, spine to it almost like um, if you use the backs of your fingers and hold them almost like taut like pencils it's like you're dragging um, that feeling across the skin but you're doing it in a very gentle way and for many moms they will have a goosebump response in reaction to this kind of touch and the thing we really like about that is that a goosebump response is our body releasing endorphins that's a signal that our body is releasing endorphins. So this is an endorphin encouraging response. That's such great news. We've talked about this in earlier, earlier in the series that we want endorphins to increase during the process of labor. And this can help with that. So this kind of feather touch massage could be done for the 30 to 90 seconds that mom is in a contraction or having a surge. And it can also be done spanning contractions. So for as long as mom wants it, really, this is not stressful to the person who's doing it. You're just allowing yourself to repetitively um, use a very gentle touch over mom's skin and do it in, these are the instructions, do it in a way that's predictable. So we don't want to be um, doing it in a way that completely changes. I go slow down and then fast up or uh, do it in a, uh, we'll talk about different methods, but it's always slow and repetitive so that mom can breathe to it. She can um, relax to it. She can anticipate it and count on it. And you do not stop this kind of touch when mom is in a surge. If suddenly you need to go to the bathroom, you can wait 30 to 90 seconds until mom is finished with her surge and then let her know with a hand on her, I need to go to the restroom. What do you need while I'm gone, right? Because your presence matters. Mom does not want to be left alone in labor unless she knows that and she can prepare herself for that or ask for something different. So um, that's an important piece of all of this. Also, for the laboring mama to give yourself permission to speak what you need. So if this touch is too fast, it's too soft, it's too anything, it's too close to your armpit, it's making you actually tickle in a bad way where you're tensing up your body rather than tickle in a way that you can relax, well, then you need to say something because your body is changing what it needs constantly in labor. There's no way even the most experienced birth partner could possibly understand what you're experiencing in your body and what you need. So being willing, giving yourself permission in advance and talking about it with your birth partner about ways that you can ask for what you need and give that kind of direction and have that direction be invited. The only reason your birth partner has their hands on you is to make it feel good. And if it doesn't, 
it's going to actually be a catecholamine inducing event, a stressful event. And we don't want that. Catecholamines get in the way of endorphins. It's exactly the opposite of what we want. So being able to work together while you're pregnant to practice this so that you have a sense for what you want, also knowing that in labor, um, the desire for touch and the desire to not be touched will probably both be present. And so you need to let your birth partner know which part you're in. But for right now, I wanna give some instructions about how to do this touch. So again, the backs of the fingers are a great way because the nails are like the spine of the feather. And so you're turning your hand so that you can use your nails both ways. You can go all the way up to the neck and back, right? You're not going under the armpit. You're not trying for the tickliest. You're trying to make it feel good, but also be really relaxing. And so mama could do her balloon breath to this, pushing her belly button away from her spine and then on the releasing it, right? And as the person who's giving the massage, if mom's already doing the balloon breath, you could make sure you time your touch with that. So you could also go up her spine and down to her sacrum, again, repeating. And you could go up her spine and down her arms, up her spine, so you'd be going up her spine and down the arms, back up again. Depending on her position, if her belly is hanging off of her spine, then her spine her back should be available. If she's laying down, it may be that you're doing this on the inside of her arms and doing that in the hands can feel so good, right? Just going all the way up and then all the way back. Some mamas would love this on their belly. Other mamas will hate having their belly touched. It just depends. And so you're exploring the scalp can be a wonderful place to do some massage, right? And to get the fingers on the massage, on, on the scalp with the, with the neck. Um, you can also do this kind of touch, those, those fingers in spirals on the back. It doesn't have to be completely predictable, but it does need to be gentle and slow. So even the spirals, even though they're not predictable, maybe I'm still matching her breath. I get to her neck, and then I go back to her spine as she exhales, or back to her sacrum, back to her neck. So she doesn't know exactly where I'm gonna touch, but she's able to work with this and put her attention on it and count on it. And I am not going to stop when she's in a contraction. That's really important. So another touch that can feel really good from your birth partner, assuming it's your intimate partner, is kissing and hugging and snuggling and uh, being held in really beautiful, intimate ways. So that's something to negotiate between you and for mom to be able to be open to. But as the birth partner, you can, you know, see what it seems like, you know, even asking like, is it okay if I hold you? Is it okay if I kiss you? You know, is it okay if I get my arms all the way around you? And at some points in labor, that might be just the perfect medicine. And at other times it may be like too much, right? I'm having so much sensation in my body already with labor that I don't want that. That's not gonna feel good to me. So, but that's a beautiful thing to offer is more of the kissing, hugging touch. And some couples you know, uh, have been known to uh, get labor to, to go, you know, if you're at a place where uh, you're being told that your labor is stalled or, or taking too long, there's some reason things need to hurry up, well, nipple stimulation can increase the oxytocin in our system. Oxytocin makes things contract, that's a good thing. And an orgasm can make our body increase oxytocin, and that's great. So. It just depends on what you're open to and what feels right between you. But um, these are great ways of inviting touch in that will support labor. So another thing is called the hip squeeze. And so this is really if mom is feeling discomfort in her back. And most moms won't have that experience of discomfort in their back, almost like cramping in your back 
unless your baby's in a less than ideal position. So if that's the case, sometimes the way the baby's positioned will send extra, you know, uh, discomfort in the spine. And the one of the things that can relieve it is pushing on the hip bones in from the outside. So pushing almost like you're grabbing the hip bones from the back and then squeezing. And so for the birth partner, it's a lot of work. For mom, it can be a huge relief of tension. And so you would squeeze for as long as you can, 30 to 90 seconds, especially during a contraction. But even in between contractions, that can bring mom a lot of relief, if it does. If it doesn't, there's absolutely no benefit to doing the hip squeeze, none. It is only to relieve some kind of discomfort. So to learn more about position, there is another video that's all about getting your baby into the ideal position before you give birth. And I do have an audio recording and video about breach. Um, if you find out your baby is breech, meaning they are head up at the end of pregnancy, then that would be a great listen to the position recording and the breach recording or videos um, and uh, work with that. Like there are so many things you can do to get your baby into an ideal position and then you will never need the hip squeeze. So uh, that is, is just for that. So uh, please get your hands on your pregnant mama. And another time that practicing touch ahead of labor um, is gonna come into play is with the mock birth practice exercise for doing it with a birth partner. So there's a mock birth practice exercise that's just for the solo to solo practice, just for mom to do on her own. And then there's the one with the birth partner. And with the birth partner, you'll be asked to do that feather touch massage basically throughout the entire exercise. So um, that's another way of stitching this uh, puzzle piece in with the other techniques that you've been learning in the series so that you have all of these pieces fit, fit together so that you feel like you have mastered all of the different techniques and uh, you're prepared to have a beautiful birthing experience.